Chris Marcus here with you from Arcadia Economics, and today a quick video about the stunning trade war between Donald Trump and the Chinese government. Notice I didn't say between China and the US. I mean, we pay the cost of it. Although more and more I realize how fantastical it is that really you have a bunch of government groups that are playing battleship out there with the public. Um, certainly is the case here where had this trade war going on for a while, a uh, year or so at this point, it always seemed odd to me, even from the beginning, just from the standpoint that here's the U.S. has lent over a trillion or the has borrowed over a trillion dollars from China. So you have your largest creditor and the president of the U.S. certainly being very antagonistic towards China. Um, I don't know, maybe some folks agree with some things he says or not, um, but just from the standpoint that it's kind of the equivalent if you go to your bookie and keep getting in a bigger debt, then you're giving the guy the middle finger. Uh, certainly a bizarre economic policy, which has only been ratcheted up even further uh, throughout the last week we heard Trump was thinking about new, uh, new tariffs, and here is latest tweet, Beijing will be hurt very badly if they retaliate with more tariffs. Uh, I think that qualifies as a threat. Um, however you want to look at it, he said that, uh, looks like on Monday, and did not take long for China to respond because markets tumble as China strikes back, may dump some treasuries. So I guess, uh, well, I mean, I've written about this before, but this is the first time we're seeing it actually uh, being publicly discussed. Quick disclaimer warning. This is coming from uh, Hugh Zhijin, I'm gonna go with there. Maybe someone can let me know if I'm close. Um, it was Chinese media where he mentions many Chinese scholars are discussing the possibility of dumping US treasuries and how to do it specifically. Now, are these Chinese scholars? Is this accurate information? Is this actually what is being discussed with folks who have decision-making power in the Chinese government? I don't know. Uh, I have seen this story reported several places, but geez, it sure seems like a significant step to me. Um, because again, I don't, and in the article I wrote last year, I mentioned how I agree with what a lot of folks suggest that I don't think it's China's first choice to dump all their treasuries and take that loss. Although you could make the argument that they've already taken the loss. I mean, it, they've lent the money to a bankrupt entity that has no mathematical way of ever repaying it. I wonder as the days go by if they have any intention or plan or care to ever repay it. Certainly when you look at Congress and the last couple of administrations, keep in mind after 230 years of the United States, the debt load was 5 trillion, Bush doubled that to 10, Obama doubled that to 20. Now the only thing I've heard about budget since Trump has been in office is when they expect it to hit 30, so not really any indication that they're ever going to pay it back. Certainly everything else that we've seen would lead you to believe that the most likely thing is that it will be printed and monetized away. And certainly if I were in China's position, um, well, it's interesting. What would you do? Maybe buy a lot of gold, maybe stop buying treasuries, and certainly at any opportunity possible, unload whatever you can. And it's often phrased how, well, if they do that, then they're gonna lose uh, big time on their position, which certainly is likely to be the case. It's interesting that somehow uh, Russia sold a uh, hundred billion of treasuries, somewhere around that amount last year, didn't even phase the market. My guess would be because the Federal Reserve and Exchange Stabilization Fund are monetizing more of that debt than they're letting on um 
But perhaps the biggest stunner here is even that this is being speculated publicly. Again, I've mentioned before how uh, you have Saddam Hussein and Gaddafi that really when they started talking about trading their oil outside of the dollar system is when they really started to run into trouble. Um, and to see some of these comments, and especially that right after Trump makes his threat, to get this response showing that at least no indication yet that they're backing down. And, and if this report's accurate, certainly they have a lot of leverage and reason not to back down. Um, <laughs> so gee, it's darn fascinating. Um, and one other note, because I saw this in regards to China as well. Um, this was also about the hardened trade stance and there was an analyst here who points out, why would you be constantly asking the Fed to lower rates if your economy is not turning weak? An excellent question. That's the same question I think, well, I mean, I guess I feel I know the answer to that one. Uh, I mean, the economy is weak. You saw what happened when rates got even up to two and a half percent last year, and a lot of the bubbles started wobbling. Um, and it's a great question where if the economy is really as strong as Trump and the Federal Reserve assert it to be, why can't you raise interest rates finally? Why are both, I mean, the Fed's stopped the tightening or plan has the end point to tightening in place. They've stopped the interest rate hikes. I mean, they've telegraphed as much as they possibly can without actually doing it, that rates are coming. Trump is talking about wanting 1% rate cuts. Um, why would that be necessary if the economy is really strong? Simple answer is that the economy to some people appears strong because it's being flooded with printed money. When you take that money away, you get the exact opposite effect of what happens when you print the money, which is what has been politically avoided for decades, centuries. Um, and it's really the same cycle that we've seen play out through the history of empire. So in some ways, uh, you know, as shocking as some of these comments and things that are happening are in other ways, uh, very predictable and to be expected. Um, but certainly seems um, at least if these uh, reports are accurate as reported that perhaps things are escalating to the next level. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, but again, certainly evidence that in a trade war, nobody really wins. And that does appear to be the case here. Uh, one way or another, not a good looking future for the US dollar and treasury markets. We'll see how long Wall Street can Humpty Dumpty that one together. But certainly again, why I look to precious metals and select cryptos as a response to endless money printing and borrowing. But leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. And I will talk to you again soon. Thanks.